Okay, hello everybody. We have Chris here. We have crazy weather. Everyone's coming in remotely, it seems. We might have a few people come in in person, but we're going to get started. Today is health and long-term care. So if you are not here, go to the club website, strongretirementclub.com. Go into the Club 2019 portal. All the way at the bottom is going to be your worksheet for tonight, your workbook. This, I think, is worth the cost of the club in itself. This is so helpful. It is such a big guide because I know it's very overwhelming. <laughs> Planning out the health, the cost of the health, everything. Oh, here's Dawn. Yes. Sent it to the email. Okay. Dawn's going to try to get on Zoom real quick. Okay. But first, before we dive into all that stuff, we're gonna go over health goals. And I want you to write down your top three health goals. Okay. And I was just reading a book about, done by another financial planner and we were, they were discussing goals and the smart way of doing goals, which, cause you probably have heard of this. Some of you might've heard of this, but it's a, the, a proper way to set a goal instead of, I'm going to lose 30 pounds in one week. Okay, is that realistic? No. <laughs> is that doable? No. Is that healthy? No. So the, a better way to set goals is to look at it, and you can use that acronym SMART. So specific. Make it a specific goal. Is it, yeah, I want to be healthier. Okay, well, that's not a very specific goal. How do you want to be healthier? Do you want to be drinking more water each day and X amount more water each day? Do you want to lose one pound a month? Do you want to work out five days a week? What is the goal? And make it as specific as you can. Okay, we have somebody coming on. Hi, Jess, it's Dawn. Oh, hey, Dawn. Hi. We are running a little behind because of this weather, but we did, oh, get, yeah. <laughs> we did get started. So what we're starting with are health goals. Okay, so write down what are your top three health goals? And we were just going over how do we set proper goals instead of saying, I want to lose 50 pounds in a month. Okay, that's not realistic and it's not healthy and it's not sustainable. But when we write down goals, we want to make, we're going to use a SMART method, right? So the acronym SMART. So the first one being specific. The more specific we can get with our goals, the better. And that's really what we want to do, even with our money. People tell me, I want to save more money by next year. Okay, if I give you $10 and you save it, that's saving, 10, that's saving more money. We want to make it very specific. The next one is measurable. We need it to be measurable so that we can see what's the progress or lack of progress, and it really holds us accountable. It keeps us committed to it. And... Even though it's measurable, how are you going to track your progress to it? Are you going to have a log of what you eat or how much you drink? Are you going to keep a tracker of the weight, your weight fluctuations? Are you going to, how else can we track our goals? Are you going to have some sort of system where you plug in every time you go to the gym? You want to go to the gym four days a week. You track it off on your calendar so you can track it. The next one, we want to make it attainable. Is it reasonable? And not, we, we also want it to be so it's a little bit of a push for us to do this. <laughs> a lot of times, okay, I want to drink a bottle of water a day. Okay, that's pretty, really, that's pretty doable. How do we push it so that it's not just something that's easy to do and you're not really that motivated to do it? We want to make it relevant. Too relevant to your goals okay is it in alignment with your overall vision and the last one's time timely what is a time frame for your goals i like to do a backup time frame and both of you know this those of you who we do the spreadsheets together know we do we have a time frame and we have a backup time frame so that if you don't hit it right away because sometimes that happens sometimes life put the pause on us and we aren't able to move past it that you don't fall off that you're still committed there's a backup time frame for it 
So write down three, top three goals. And then below that, how are you gonna stretch? We've done this before in the club. How are you gonna stretch yourself to get those goals? How are we gonna stretch? We have our first few in-person people coming in. So I'm gonna let you guys work on that while I get them started. Okay. out in a while. <laughs> I'm scared to go out. Yes. Okay. We have four people coming in virtually. <laughs> Trying to get Georgette the link. Come on in. You look lovely as Oh, thank you. You too. Okay. Okay. Well, everyone is getting settled. We're just writing down our top three health goals. Health? Yes. Health goals. And what would that be? It could be to drink more water. It could be to eat better. It could be to... I all those things. <laughs> so you're perfectly healthy. It could be mental health. It could be meditation or wanting to do yoga more. I yoga. It could... <laughs> I yoga. I drink water. I cook. I eat healthy. What else? I, I, I should walk more. Maybe that's okay, there you go. Walk more. I walk, but not enough. More cardio. Oh, hey, Georgia, you got on. I did. Hi. You're good. <laughs> Hello. So we're starting with our top three health goals as everyone comes in. Okay. We're just going over how do we set proper health goals? And I've been using the SMART method, which is an acronym for specific. We need specific goals. So Christine was just saying walk more. Is it walk three times a week? Is it walk a certain number of miles each week? What is it? Okay, the more specific we can get, the more we can track it and track our progress and it holds us accountable, right? I say, people say, oh, I wanna lose weight. Okay, if you lose a pound, is that what you're looking for or is it something more? The next one is measurable. So that's why we want to get as specific as we can to make sure we can measure how far are we from our goals, how do we get there, and how do we track it if it is measurable? How do we track it? So you're going to have a calendar where, Christine, you're going to cross off each mm. day you walk or you keep a spreadsheet of how many miles you walk each, each week. The next one is attainable. <laughs> it can't be head in the clown, I'm gonna lose 50 pounds in a week. That's not attainable. Is it reasonable? Isn't it reasonable with our lifestyle, with our health? Maybe somebody already has a health issue and they wanna get really healthy, but exercising six days a week is gonna make their health issue even worse. So then it's not attainable. Is it relevant? Is it in alignment with your vision? what you want for your life, for your retirement. Sometimes people want to lose a ton of weight, but then they have no energy for anything else. <laughs> and they wanted to lose weight to get more energy, but they're barely eating anything, so they have no energy for the day. And timely. 
So we need to have a time frame for those goals. Okay. And health goals are so important at this stage in your guys' lives because the more we can maintain our health, our fitness, the longer we can have a quality of life, we, the longer we can have our mobility, our independence, the more we can do stuff we want to do. Right. So it's really important to, and so many women, now that they are in retirement or coming up to it, they have more time to focus on their health that they didn't have before. And it doesn't just have to be like our physical health, like I said before, it could be our mental health. Right? That's something that I'm working on. I am very committed to my physical health, but my mental health took a toll last year. And that's something that I am focusing on this year to really help. Because if mentally I'm not there, the whole family suffers. <laughs> my business suffers. I can't give my clients the best. I can't give you ladies my best. Okay. So writing down, what are our top three health goals? Okay. And then we have to figure out how, how we're going to get these goals. What's going to push us out of our comfort zone, stretch us to get these goals, attain these goals. Okay. Some women are scared of the gym. My mom is so intimidated by the gym. You won't go either. <laughs> so for her to join a gym would be very stretchy and out of her comfort zone. Or maybe to hire a trainer. Oh, I don't want to look stupid. Oh, I'm going to look really weak. It's gonna, I'm gonna look silly. She always is like, do I look silly in these pants, mom? Like everyone wears <laughs> yoga pants, mom, don't worry. <laughs> How are we gonna stretch ourselves past it so that we can do something we really want to do? What is our overall vision? With special regards to health, it's not just about losing the weight. What is your vision 10 years into retirement? Are you still traveling? Are you still really active? What is your vision? Because if you do vision that, being healthy, getting healthy, staying healthy is a big piece of traveling, of giving back, of volunteering. Or some women, they want to have their own career in retirement, their own business. Well, you need your health for that. So you keep going. And then what is your why? So if your vision is to be very a very energetic, like my grandmother was bowling into her 90s. She loved it, right? really energetic why is that so important to us for her it's because she had how many grandchildren did she have she had about 14 grandchildren by the time she passed away she had nine great grandchildren so she wanted to be at as many graduations as many weddings as many birthday parties as she could well into her time that was her why family was her reason and then what beliefs do we need to have to make this happen? What beliefs? Is it to know that I can lose weight if I want to lose weight or I can get more active if I want to lose weight? Is it that I, I'm worth that, that I can prioritize it, that I have time for it? A lot, of, a lot of time we think we don't have time for it. I just don't have time. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it the next day. I'll do it the next day. So what are the beliefs we need to have? So Kat Decor, she is a, a strategic partner with our club now. She's a health and fitness coach out of Vegas, but she does her program is all virtual. Georgia, you met her, at least this thing. So she I was, did. yeah, she was going to be, she was extremely sick during our webinar. She was supposed to present then. And this day just didn't work out for her. But we're going to, she'll either be a part of our fall retreat or we're going to schedule time just for her to present because she works with women in their 50s and 60s. And whether menopause has come into place and now, oops, oh, we went to Georgia's screen. And now what they used to be able to do, they can't do anymore or isn't working for them anymore. Or they've had a health issue their entire life, whether it's cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes. And now they realize. I'm going to prioritize myself and my health so that I can have the retirement I want to have that I've worked so hard for. Okay. So she's a big asset. Unfortunately, she can't be with us tonight, but we're going to make sure that she gets in front of you guys. Okay. All right, cool. So if you're joining us via Zoom, here you go, Christine. 
Christine and I are going to have a one-on-one -on -one in the office <laughs> as everyone comes in virtually. But you can get your workbooks. I just uploaded them to our club website. So if you go to strongretirementclub.com to our club 2019 portal, you'll be able to click. This is all the way at the bottom. Yo, Georgia, you got it. Chris has got it. Hopefully Don can get it and everybody else participating virtually or watching this afterwards. Okay. So this is what I was saying at a presentation earlier today. Chris was there for it. And we talked about how it's not that we don't care about our health or that we don't care about our retirement or our money. It's more the problem comes into play because we get overwhelmed. And health and retirement is very overwhelming. There are a lot of dates to remember, a lot of different numbers to remember, prescriptions, doctors, long-term care. There's all these things that get very overwhelming. There's so much information about it out there. We can over-research it to death. We get we just get too stimulated by everything. Everyone's chirping in our ear. My sister said this. My coworker said that. My boss said this. And then that makes us feel very disorganized and haphazard in our thinking. Right? So this is what I built for the last club because I wanted to break it down for each stage of retirement, what you need to think about, what are the costs associated with it, what are the logistics of it, and how do we be proactive and start planning for the next stage? Like what pieces do we need to get in place for each stage? Okay. So what we'll do now is we'll just kind of run through it real quick. <clears throat> Those of you who have my new book, I actually have a sample of this in the book with an example from one of my old club members <laughs> and what her, her answers were. So you get an idea, but let's see, how many of you think you'll, Christine, you're already retired. <laughs> So, and you're on Medicare? No, November. November, okay. I have to start and make my first call today. I, I went to see your first um, Oh, you did? No, no, I didn't do it yet. Okay, you're going to. Crazy. Yeah. But um, that's what I have to do. Okay. Because I have to go to Social Security office to apply. Mm -hmm. They told me to come in September. So, since I've begun for a month, and I want to make sure everything gets... Everything set up when you come back. You know, okay. I know, have an idea what to do when, by the time I come back. Okay, good. Good. Who thinks they'll, for the pre-retirees, think they'll retire before age 65? Bridget? Chris, maybe? Oh, you're on mute, Chris. <laughs> I got interrupted, so I didn't hear your question. Oh, do you think you'll retire before age 65? I'd like to say so. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So what happens? But retirement might just mean scaled down because I love what I do. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So when we retire before 65, we go on, we have our own health insurance, right? Unless you're a teacher or police officer who's very, very fortunate and have a benefit when they retire, you're going to go on probably the Affordable Care Act, right? Affordable Care Health Insurance. What does that look like dollar amount? That a woman in the last club, Christine, what do you pay each month? 800. 800. Um, That's what she pays. Yes, yeah, so you can write down if you're gonna retire before Medicare, so we have the pre-Medicare piece. You can write down for reference price per month. It could be 800 to 1,000 a month, depending on the type of insurance you'll need, okay? And then you can break that down per year, how much it's going to be. Too much. Too much, yes. <laughs> and then how many years are you going to be paying that for? So before tonight, I got, I was on Facebook and I saw an article about healthcare and retirement. The average retiree pays in total. Anybody want to guess how much they pay in total for health? Healthcare and retirement? 
higher or lower than 100,000? No, hopefully not. Then you get rid of your money really fast. No, it's that's... higher. Higher. It's higher. Yeah. Higher or lower than 200,000? No, it cannot be. I'd no. say higher. Yes, it's higher. $386,000. Wow. Per year? No, no, in total, in total. <laughs> retirement. Yeah, yeah. Until retirement. For, through. through retirement, for retirement. Wow. $386,000. It's like, where the heck is that money coming from? <laughs> and that's our, that's why you need the plan. That's a pretty... And that's just if nothing major happens. That's just for your monthly and your regular check. That's not including long-term care, like you said, Georgia. Yep. Okay. Mm. Once Medicare hits... And that's the next piece. We might have more women coming up. Once Medicare hits, we have our enrollment window. Right, so we have three months prior to the month you hit Medicare, the month you hit Medicare, and then three months after you hit Medicare. Oh, this is me. It's crazy out there. You've heard that. Enough rain already, right? Yeah. Everywhere. Just take a seat wherever. We have a lot of people on virtually. Oh, we do? Yeah. More people. This is where people are. It was 529. And it's coming to the exit. Yeah. And it said 200 feet. So I'm like, oh, no, this isn't it. So I kept going. Oh, it's right. tricky oh, yeah, because yeah. It's, it, it is it is growing, but it's mm -hmm. north yeah first and then grow. Yes. So then I had to go ten more minutes this way. Oh no! Ten more minutes this way. That's all right. We're just getting into our workbooks. Mm -hmm. okay. We're just going crazy in the <laughs> water line wherever you go. So our Medicare enrollment window is a seven month period. Three months prior to 65, the month you hit 65, and then three months after you hit 65. And that's important to remember because if you don't enroll during that period, why Christine's like, I'm going to be on top of this, I'm going to do it right away, you get penalized for each month you don't enroll. Because Medicare doesn't want you to enroll when you have a big health issue. They want your premiums every time coming in to help mitigate that risk. Yeah. So Medicare, it depends on, oh, and another side note is, if you are working past 65 and you are on your employer's health plan, you don't need to enroll in Medicare. They might want you to enroll in Part A because it's free and it lowers their cost, but you don't have to. So your enrollment window wouldn't start until you leave that job, if you, once you leave those benefits. And it's the same thing if you're you're on your spouse's benefits and they're still working in your past 65. Okay. So if, if um so if I want to retire like at 67 mm -hmm. and um, Charlie's still been working another three years and we can go under his blue cross blue shield and I don't have to then I don't or you don't I do when you, I retire. You'd have to check with his benefits mm, to see right. they might want you to enroll in part a because it's free so yeah once you retire you're gonna and you part switch over to a, theirs um i mean i don't care what they want to do i want to know what's best for me so i should do part a well part a retire? yeah medicare part a is free so a lot of plans like well just enroll in that because it co covers hospitals oh it's good to enroll in it yeah so it cover it'll cover me, and then whatever my husband get would complete the rest. Yes. Out, it, I would have no, no bill. But you, know, you should like, have very minimal bill. But depending on the company, like my company allowed me to have my husband on my insurance all the way through his there retirement. Go. Yeah. Uh, so he Your never went on Medicare. Your, yeah, my insurance when I was working. Yeah, so they allowed me to have him insured with me. Yep. So they yeah, might well, not. Make no, you. that's me too. So you know, that's me too. But I think it depending on the company, it does, right. they allow you to do that. On the company, the size of the yeah. company, and their. Well, my husband's covered under mine. 
That's why I went to, to work. This is the reason sure. I'm working. And then when you retire. But, the 50, but because I have an option to get insurance with his company, um, you see, before he moved, the, his company didn't have the option. But okay. now with his company does because he, he got a new job. But because I have an opportunity with his, they make me pay $50 a month. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. So you might penalize. That's ridiculous. But yeah. I guess because in the long run, I don't know. But I don't. Yeah. Yeah. As in every health plan is different. So what they want to say. When I, when I retire at 66.4 or whatever, I just enroll in the Part A, and then I would have like double coverage. You would want to talk with his yeah. health insurance first check before you enroll. His, check yep. with his. Check with his. Make sure that they allow you to be covered yeah. mm -hmm. oh you mean check with them if, if they would if they would cover me yes That's right. even though I wouldn't yeah. even mm -hmm. even though I would enroll yep they could not yeah every plan's different mm -hmm. if it's a small business they don't have to cover you okay cool so Medicare per month depends on your income the year before mm -hmm. So the year, if you, you retire the year before you turn 65 and you have a high income, you're going to pay more in premiums. But usually it's going to be 150 to 200, 250 a month. That's what I didn't find out. And they will take this out of your social security. They will take it out of your social security. So if you're already taking social security, that's a good point, Christine. Yeah. They'll automatically take out those, that money for Medicare. And you're really paying for Medicare Part B. That's where the premium comes into play. Part B is for um, doctor's visits. I thought it was A and B. Medicare covers you. A is free. So, oh, the, so yeah, is. the premium is for B. Yeah. Mostly hospitals? Yes. Hospitals? Mostly hospitals. Mm -hmm. okay. Or any procedure. So you get no money. And then, you get no social security. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can get a supplemental policy which is pitiful you know I, you can get I very good coverage okay they are aarp aarp is a big one but they don't cover dental prescription or they don't or vision yeah they usually don't cover dental or vision or and it's very minimal it's expensive depending. and that's the supplemental right jess the supplemental yep and they don't cover and they should cover drugs but depending on which drugs you take yes I just mm -hmm. found out one of my drugs, four hundred fifty dollars deductible per year. I mean, okay. On top of the payment every month, okay. so that's a lot. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So what we find is people before Medicare age and they're paying out of pocket for medical costs, they're going to pay about ten thousand a year. Once you right, <laughs> once you hit Medicare age, it's going to go in half. It's going to be more about four to five thousand a year. Oh, once you hit, it's depending because like Medicare. Once you hit sixty-five, okay, it's Medicare. You, I don't yeah. think so because once you let's hit, say yep. sixty-five, five thousand of about mm -hmm. one hundred and hundred and sixty a month. Oh my God, here plus yeah. plus the deductible plus the uh, well, prescription you, does not include even. Vision then you can get a very good supplemental for two to four hundred dollars a month and you have like my grandma she we had no out-of-pocket costs with our supplemental it was so good huh? but it's going to depend on your prescriptions the yeah. doctors you go to if yeah. you have a lot of specialty doctors <clears throat> that type of stuff it's going to depend on it okay and then in the work, but you'll see, I kind of broke down nutrition and fitness. So you can kind of have your go-to plan for each stage of retirement for nutrition and fitness. But I think the biggest piece and what people are, are most concerned about is long-term care. So when you retire. So with the nutrition and fitness, yes. are you, here is, is this the dollar amount or is this what you're going to be doing to keep yourself social? Exactly. What is your action plan? Okay. Action plan meaning how much money does it cost to keep this? No, I mean, what are the steps you're taking? What are the steps you're taking to be socially engaged? What are the steps you're doing to be physical? If you want, you can add a dollar amount to say physical. What's your gym membership? Like you can add dollar amounts to that so you can have an idea of 
yeah. what everything's going to cost you, which isn't a bad idea. What's your food plan? Rest and recovery. <laughs> That's another piece. You know, what are we doing to take care of our bodies when we're not in motion all the time, our downtime? And that's going to be a big piece for our fall retreat is we're going to do different things like meditation, um, you know, really quality of life, mental health, maybe some yoga. We'll see how crazy we get. Okay. <laughs> What's this fall retreat? In October, our, our event is going to be a, a one-day thing. A full day thing on What's a Saturday. I have I've got in between two dates, so I'll get that out there. You mean I can do two options. No. Well, what if I'm working? Well, we'll address that after. Okay. okay? <laughs> we'll make sure that we can get it with everybody's calendar as best we can. Okay. So the big thing at this stage of retirement, when you just retire, the early years of retirement is to, for long-term care planning, is to have a family discussion. And Georgia, she was just in the office, and we'll give an example of what Georgia and I have been working on, and an example if she's okay with that. Sure. <laughs> we were explaining, Georgia doesn't have children, but she has nieces and nephews, and she has sisters. And she has her one sister as her power of attorney, her medical power of attorney. We're talking about, okay, what happens if she's, her age starts to get up there? You're going to want to have somebody younger, the next generation, to make those decisions for you and help out. And so what we can do is have a whole plan in place. And you basically go to your nieces, her most responsible one, saying, I have everything all set. This is what's going to happen to me. This is where the money is. This is how it's going to get paid for. This is what to do with my house right? All those things. And just to open up that discussion. So they're not worried about it. You're not worried about them worrying about it and what to do with you, where to put you, that burden, all the guilt of finding a place. And Georgette said, one of those continuous care facilities is very intriguing. Because once you're in a location, as you need more care, it's very easy, right? You can go from independent living, you can even have an independent house, that was my one grandmother. She had her own house, but if she needed to, they had assisted living in a nursing home or even condos, apartments, all in that same complex. So it makes it so much easier. You're not leaving your friends, your support, the people you know. It's all in one place. And that actually, both of my grandmas were in places like that. That's even in Pennsylvania. Yeah. So a lot of them, especially the continuous care facilities, you have, a you have a buy-in price mm. for a few hundred thousand, which is like your house, right? And then you'll have a monthly expense each, a monthly expense each month. I think it depends on how old you are too when you go there. Well, it depends on the need for help, your need for help, mm -hmm. right? Where are you going? If you were to stay here, a nursing home is 10 to 12,000 a month. But what Georgia and I are talking about is a continuous care facility where you're not starting out in the nursing home, you're starting on the independent side. So like a, yeah, but they're like, yeah. like $300 a day. But that's on the low cost, I think. That's a lot of money. <laughs> it is, so that's what, that's what we're planning for. <laughs> so, I guess we can plan for that, but isn't there other options of staying in your home? And just having a live-in person come? Long term, I think doesn't cover if you can still move. It's also personal so, preference. I think, yeah, so let, let's just go through and then we're going to talk yeah. about long-term care and stuff. But that is my, my biggest suggestion is to, once you retire, you have that conversation right away with your family. Who's ever going to be that person? They know where everything is, what are the steps, what are you thinking, what you have planned out already. Everything is, what we're thinking. What's planned out? Mm -hmm. And who are the professionals that you're working with? So they know if something were to happen, my uncle had a stroke. My aunt found him on the kitchen floor with his skull cracked open the next morning. He was in a coma for four weeks. They didn't think he was going to make it. He was 70, ran almost every day. And now he is in a nursing facility. He has, so him and my aunt got married 20 years ago. 
he thinks they're engaged to be married and he doesn't know if he wants to go through with it or not. So he lost 20 years of memory. And you can imagine how frustrated he is, how agitated he is. He can get very angry and aggressive. But that's how quickly these things can happen. That's why we plan for them. That's why we have these discussions. And unfortunately, even though he's my dad's brother, my dad's been an advisor working with him for 35 years, and he told him, get your wills done, get your power of attorneys done, get all these things done. They didn't do any of it. And it's a second marriage, so and so they cool. both have kids from previous marriages. Oh, and chances are, because otherwise he's healthy, he just doesn't have his memory. He could live in a nursing home for 10, 20 years. She's not going to have any money. Right? That's why people are in the club. That's why we have these discussions so that I don't want that to happen to anybody. Right? And then at the bottom, I have unexpected conditions and costs. So some people know they're going to have a surgery soon. I have my one hip done, I'm going to get my other hip done. I have my one knee done, I'm going to get my other knee done. <laughs> What are surgeries that are expected? What are the costs going to be? What are the recovery going to be? Who's going to help you with the recovery? Dental. I see so much money going out for dental for retirees that we don't think about. Okay. So we have that for each stage of retirement. What I would like to do tonight especially is I would like to do one-on-one -on -one hot seats with everybody because I can see everyone has a lot of different questions. And I want to briefly talk about long-term care and then go into each, everyone can have one question, I'll give you 10 minutes and we hash it out in 10 minutes and everyone can see in here and learn from everybody. Does that sound good? Cool. So briefly, let's go to the relaxation worksheet. The next page. Next page. So we have long-term care, when we go back to long-term care, action steps. Oh, oh, you skipped through the right. Wait a minute. You we went for honeymoon, yeah. The honeymoon yeah, that's the first phase. Oh, that's, we'll just oh cross God. off the top and write honeymoon there. Oh, and then go there? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So at this stage in retirement, you're going to be in your 70s. So it's the same exact thing, but pretty much. This is a time, and some of you might have parents going through this or have gone through this okay. when they're in the relaxation phase, yeah. Okay. Older retirees, and now they might be healthy, but something might seem off every once in a while, or you know something's coming up down the road. They're, they can't be this healthy forever, right? And it's at this point, we need to have the conversation of, okay, where am I, what are my plans? Is it to stay at home, right, you mentioned? Is it to stay at home and have a home health aid? How much does that cost? Who's going to pay for it? Who's going to make the arrangements? When the health aide needs to go on vacation, who's going to fill in for them? <laughs> These things happen. <laughs> I've seen it happen with my, my husband's grandfather. Who's going to help them? Who's going to take you to and from doctor's appointments? Because sometimes home health aides don't do that. If you're going to go into a continuous care facility, you should probably be thinking about, okay, which one am I gonna do? Should I do a down deposit? What's gonna happen with my house? Who is gonna pack up my house? Who's gonna take care of my belongings? Right. So it's really now, we've been done the planning, now we're gonna start to execute the, that planning and making sure everyone, again, another family discussion, right? This is what I have set up so far, it's really, where am I going or who's going to take care of me? How's it going to get funded? What's going to pay for it? Where's that money coming from? And then really what's going to happen to where I'm currently living and all that stuff, right? We forget about that, but we have our house, we have our furniture, we have our photographs, <laughs> our belongings. Maybe you have something that was your great grandmother's, a piece of furniture and stuff, right? What happens to all of that? And then just going forward to the reflection stage, and this is the last stage of retirement, this is usually when it happens, right? We're in 80s and 90s. We're reflecting back on our life, the type of impact we've had on our, the people around us. 
this is usually there's a, a 70 percent chance you'll need long-term care once you hit 64. This is when we see it happening, in our 64? 80s and 90s. Once you hit 64, there's a 70% chance you'll need long-term care at huh? some point in your life. Yeah. Oh, okay, not at 64. No, 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 once you hit 64, from 64 to the end of your life, there's a 70% chance you'll need it at some point. 70%? Mm-hmm. Need it. Need long-term. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be fine with this. <laughs> You're gonna say I'm going to be positive that I will need long term <laughs> care. Yeah, me too. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what you write down, right? Like Christine and I met with a, a trust company, a director of a trust company, and he's like, okay, just write it down. Sell everything in the house donate everything in the house or you can sell pieces donate some and then like mattresses that type of stuff nobody takes anymore so i want to share with you guys the story of my two grandmothers because it's a big reason why i focus on women near in retirement okay completely different lives <laughs> my dad grew up in bergen county called the shanty irish Right, it was a what, two bedroom house with five kids, one bathroom, right, just crazy. His dad worked on the railroad, retired at 62, and six months later died from leukemia. Oh. Thank God he took the survivor option for his pension because my grandmother lived till 98. When you think of that, she was single longer than she was married wow. at that point. Yeah. But thank God she chose that because otherwise, Back then, they didn't really have much savings, right? You had a few CDs, you might have a few random stocks, but it wasn't like today at all, right? Their savings was his pension. Okay. And I remember her all the time being so scared of, especially when she went to the adult living facility and she was independent. She moved to assisted in the nursing home, but she would always be are my bills getting paid, Danny? Did you file my tax return? Are the IRS, are they coming to get me? She really did live in this fear of not having enough money and somebody coming after her. And for her, it was this real paranoia and this scare, just being so scared of not being taken care of in retirement. It was very hard to watch. I'm like, your son's a financial advisor <laughs> and he's been planning for this your whole adult life and it's, Part of what drove him into the business was seeing how shaken up his mom was after losing her husband so <clears throat> quickly because he didn't know he had cancer when he got retired. It was that quick he got diagnosed and passed away. So for me, when I work with women as we come up to retirement, I want them to know that we are doing the planning, we're doing the hard work now so that they don't have to live in that constant state of fear like my grandma. Right? And she also had five children who would have done anything, you know, to take care of her if she were to run out of money. But that is a big piece of, you know, why, why I do this club, why we put a lot of work in right now, because I want you to be able to enjoy what you've worked so hard for, the savings you worked so hard for, and to make sure we optimize everything out there for it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Rosie. Now, my mom's mom had a completely different, the story and upbringing. My, my grandparents, my mom's mom and dad divorced when she was four. She remembers being at the courthouse and the judge asking her at age four in front of both parents, who do you want to live with? So could you imagine being that young and having to make that type of decision? So she said both, because what, what are you going to do? Right. A smart girl. A <laughs> Her mom was mentally unstable. She had severe, she was bipolar, <clears throat> very bipolar. She wasn't taking medication for it. She had a very successful career. She had her own TV show for several years. She would take speed during the week and sleeping pills on the weekend. Okay, so imagine bipolar, yet you're taking things to spike you up or <laughs> cut you down. Wow. So she, she was controlling it during the week and the weekend so she could sleep and do her work. Yeah, 
yeah, just she was like surviving. Yeah. She was just trying to do it. Then if she would take the medication in the first place, she would have to do that. Right. right. Well, <laughs> Probably. Yeah, yeah, but, but people, I know people. Yeah. yeah. Know people. We didn't know as much as we do now That's about right. it. And they called it medical prostitution. Yeah. So she did get remarried. Terrible story. <laughs> that too. You can read my first book. It's all in there about it. But he ended up. He was a DC lawyer. At that point, she was retired. Retired down south to first it was Outer Banks and then to Amelia Island in Florida. He stayed working in D.C. and they would see each other a few weekends a year. Pretty easy. And they were married for 35 years. Three weekends married. Three weekends yeah. a year? A few weekends. I really couldn't tell you exactly how many, but it wasn't a lot at all. And then she got a call in the middle of the night after 35 years of being married to him from an emergency room in Bethesda, Maryland. And they said, does he do this often? And she goes, what are you talking about? Well, he's in a pink negligee with pink fingers and toenails. And his mistress, yeah, the mistress dropped him off and said it's not her problem to deal with. So she got completely blindsided with this whole other life he was living. So he had two mistresses, one he was putting through college, the other one he was renting an apartment for her, bought her a Mercedes. I mean, he would buy them $5,000 handbags, insane. And it was baffling to us because he was so cheap with us, so cheap to the point where my brother and I were like four and six years old and he was cheating us in poker. My dad was seeing him cheat us in poker. That was the grand, anyway, the grandfather. Yeah. Grandfather. my mom's stepfather. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so did he, <clears throat> if he was taking care of the other women, did he take care of her? As well? well, no, because she, she was financially independent. She had her money from being a TV show host and everything. But he did, and this is why it's always important to know exactly what's going on with your money. Because he was a savvy lawyer, he put all the houses, they had a few houses in his name. He took mortgages out on the houses in his name, everything. So they lawyered up, spent way too much money in lawyer fees, everything. <clears throat> so they got divorced after 35 years of marriage, after finding out this huge piece. He was an alcoholic. He was supporting mistresses all along. Just insane story. <laughs> so my grandmother, she retired down to Amelia Island after that, and she moved from she had this gorgeous plantation style house. She moved into a continuous care facility. She had her own house. It was a really great setup. She could take her golf cart to the beach. They had a clubhouse where she would go for meals and stuff. And then one morning my cousin went to check on her and she found her in her bed. She had a stroke the night before and lost oxygen to her brain. So she was on life support until my mom could get down there. Her one brother was in Malaysia working. He had to get there. The other brother was in Wyoming. So they all got there and they made the decision. There wasn't really much of a decision, right? She, she was brain dead at that point and stuff. And then after that happened, it, was, it wasn't it was a mess. Luckily, she had a very good lawyer, a state lawyer down there. They did a very good job with the will. They had a trust company be the executor of the will So because she knew the family dynamic with the siblings, and she knew the one brother, her one son was a big bully. And to this day, he still doesn't talk to the family. There's yeah, there's always one of those. So that's... Only because she did it right. Yeah, she did it, yeah. And he was mad that he didn't yeah. get to take advantage. Yes, exactly. So Good point, Rosemary. So that's a big reason why we, we want to make sure that we cover what we can with our health the cost of it, the planning of it, and then things that we're going to talk about next time regarding the estate, right? Because so many couples tell me their kids get along, their kids get along, their kids get along. But when money and grief are involved, mm -hmm. we don't think right. Mm -hmm. And grief is a very selfish emotion because we're viewing how much I'm missing this person and we, we just, we don't want to be, we know. You want to replace it with something. Yeah, exactly. It's, we're only thinking about us in that moment and how much I miss that person, how much I want that person back. And when we, whenever we make a decision selfishly, we're, we're going to hurt somebody's feelings. 
So that's why it's really important to me to always make sure everything gets done properly. Okay. So thank you for letting me share the story of my grandmothers and a big backing to why I put so much work into this type of stuff and to take care of you guys, my club members and my clients and everything. Okay. So what I would like to do now, this is going to be a quick activity and then we're going to go into our hot seats for the last hour. Okay is I have a coin, you guys can see, I have a coin. So remember I gave you a stat that 70% chance of leading long-term care after 64? So for women, it's a 58% chance. Okay. An average between men and women is 70%, yeah, 58%. So we did last club, and what we're gonna do tonight is we flipped a coin to see if we're gonna go in a place or not. <laughs> And what is our action plan going to be? Okay. Who wants to start? To go. So heads. Heads is going to be nursing home. I'll just write that down so I remember. Tails means you won't need one. Okay. Okay. Rosemary's going to start. So what do I do? Just throw it in the yep, air? Just like yep. Heads. Heads. You're going into a nursing home. Okay. What, what type of facility do you want to go to? How are you going to pay for it? What's going to happen with your house? Um, I don't know you guys can see here. <laughs> well, first of all, I want to say that that wasn't what I wanted. Would, that's not my plan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's none of our Now plan. we have a backup plan. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, because it. All right, well, I guess I'll go this direction then. Okay, so um, I would probably do the one that you were mentioning, where you can go. A continuous care facility? Right, but it would be. Oh, so I'm not independent now. I have mm -hmm. to, if I'm in a nursing home, that means I'm not yeah. independent. You fell, you had a stroke. Okay, so I'm not independent. I'm going into a nursing home. Um, yeah, an extended care facility mm -hmm. where they have um, a close to home. Um, where your son is. It would be wherever my son is. Okay. Um, he's moving out in August. Actually, he's going into Bloomfield, and I don't mind going there because I was born and raised. I was born in Montclair. Okay. And my mom was born in Bloomfield, so it's like <laughs> we're going home. Yeah. She's in heaven. Very excited about it. Um, yeah, we're gonna have a meeting with you this month with him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Um, and so I would, um, yeah, well, it's an extended care facility, but I've seen a couple, my mom and then my, my brother's in-laws, like, and then my, my husband's mom. Okay. She had zero money. So she was Medicaid mm -hmm. and she had like, they gave her like $40 spending, $20 spending money, $40 spending money a month. Okay. And um, I don't want to go there because if I was there, I would have to share a room. Not that I'm not very friendly and sociable, but I don't want to share a room with somebody. That's a good point, too. When we rely on Medicaid, mm -hmm. we don't have the cream of the crop. <laughs> we, we don't get to pick exactly where we're going to go. You go where there's an available bed. Right. And most of the time, I mean, when she first went into that place, the facility, she was sharing a room with four people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that what you have to do? <laughs> and that I don't want to do that. So whatever it takes, and you know, I would go. Um, I'm not, you know, I would do research on the facilities and then just make the decision. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it would depend. Am, am I stroked out? Do I have my brain? Am I just, you know, they, when we flip the coin, it's imagining you. You don't have time to plan for it. It's happening. You're going in tomorrow. Right. Because that's how quickly it can happen, right? And that's why this is that's why we do this exercise so that you realize the more proactive we can be with yeah. that plan, mm -hmm. the less reactive we have to be in playing catch up or your son having to make all these decisions Absolutely. for you. Well, that's like one of my business fears would be the stroke. I'm always telling him the signs. These are the signs. Oh, <laughs> you know, fast and yeah. Just if you get treated within three hours, you usually can get completely healed. But yeah, so I mean. What were the what were my things that I'm supposed to? Decide? No, that was good. Okay. That's good. Christine, your turn. 
And then I'll flip it for you ladies. Uh -huh. I never do this. Just flip the in the air. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, it's cold. Head, you're going in. What's your plan? I don't I don't <laughs> care, I guess, because since I you know, so again if I'm you know, hopefully somebody finds me, report it to the lawyer, the trustee, and they will mm -hmm. make the arrangements according how much money is left in the bank, in, in my, yeah. in my, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I specified what I like to go. Yeah, so uh, that's something that as we go through it, as you make those decisions, you can have that list going. But yeah. you don't need to have all those decisions right now. Right. But as you come up to that time in your life, it's like, okay. These are like three facilities that I like. <laughs> I like to do that now. Because it can happen tomorrow. Yeah, it really can. We could it have could. it still tomorrow. So. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, I mean, I'm looking at you because I I don't want to think that it can happen tomorrow. It's <laughs> the only thing. Right. Well, and I guess, since, you know, I didn't realize that you can go to Medi Medicaid, that mm -hmm. you have to share room with four other people. That would be... But if, depending, if I don't have my mind, then I don't care where they send me. Yeah. You know, so and like whatever said, I have, it just goes it because, yeah. you know, since I don't have anybody to, yeah, I don't have to worry about leaving anything to anybody, then whatever decision and how, depending how much money I will have, yeah, I will be sent to facility accordingly, I mm -hmm. guess. But that's exactly what you said. What you, you mentioned, and whether you have kids or using a trust company or somebody, you can outline it for them. So, okay, okay sure. you get bumped on your head, you can't make a decision. They have their cheat sheet. <laughs> they know yeah. exactly Just tell them the what point. to do, what are the priorities. Ooh, I didn't think okay. about it. I guess I have to start looking. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to research. It's all part of this process. Right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's why we have these sheets. You can keep your notes. It keeps it organized. It's not overwhelming and stuff. Okay. Which one of you ladies wants to go first? I'll do Chris. All right. Chris, your tails, you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don, can you hear us? Again. Okay. I'm going to flip your coin. Ready? Okay. Oh, your tails too. You're safe. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Georgette. <laughs> Let's see. No I know. I'm safe. I don't have uh, Georgette, you got head. What's so your I'm plan? <laughs> okay. Um, right now, I do have a um, a will that has basically what my estate and who it goes to. Um, but you had mentioned the house and all that other stuff. Um, that, you know, since I am single, I don't have children, that would be sold. And, and actually, since we talked last, I have been really looking with, with a different set of eyes at the contents of my house. Because I don't know about you ladies, but you can very easily be a pack rat. Like, oh, well. Yeah, yeah, I haven't worn that in a couple of years, but I'm going to hang on to it. Or, you know, I'm not going to look in that drawer, but I know it's full. But you know what? I don't need the space right now. <laughs> so I'm definitely going through and doing a lot of cleaning up and clearing out of stuff. So that it gets to the point where somebody else has to make those decisions. They don't have to, A, go through the crap, um, and B, um, I've set aside the things that should be kept or... Uh, so I'm getting organized in that that perspective. So yeah, I think um, between the will that I currently have, which I definitely want to take a look at because it's been probably 15 years since I've written it, and um, I, there are power of attorneys um, for your medical as well as for your financials, so I have to get those in place. Okay, good. And then one thing Georgia and I have been working on is there are different options to pay for long-term care. Right. We can pay out of pocket for it, but what we say that's ten to twelve thousand a month for a nursing home, depending on it. There's yep. long-term care insurance, which can be very expensive. Mm -hmm. And the big issue people have with it is, if I don't need it, I spend all this money for nothing. Which we, which we all did. the insurance, right? Mm -hmm. Which we did with my husband, and then then my sister-in-law had the same one, and she finds out that unless you cannot get out of bed, they will not. You cannot oh, use your long term. Yeah, all these. So little. you can't huh. perform two of the five activities of daily living. What are they? Eating, dressing, going to the bathroom, moving from place to place, and what is it? What, what, wow. When they showering. 
Well, wow. she cannot, so she should be able, well, she, like so when they you, say moving from place to place, what do they mean? In the house, moving from place to place? Yeah, so if you're by, at home by yourself, you can move yourself from one chair to another. You see, she can, but she has to use a walker and she cannot lift a pot with one hand and that's still considered that she's independent. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, when you, yes. when you think you spent so much money and yeah. you paid thousands for mm -hmm. my husband yeah. for 40 years. Wow. You know, which if you would invest the money, you yeah. would be a millionaire probably. Oh, yeah. wow. So what we found are more cost effective ones and ones that will, even if you don't need a nursing home facility, there's still a benefit for it. So there's ones that are an annuity that will pay out three times the amount if you go into a nursing home, or even if you're at home, but you can't perform the two of the activities of daily living. So there's an annuity. And what's nice about that is so it pay, you put in 100,000, and then the next year you go in and it'll pay out 300,000, and that's tax-free, that difference. And that's a big, that's a big shift. The one Georgia and I are looking at, so that one is good if you're in your 60s. If you have more time to build into the policy, what Georgia and I are looking at is a life insurance, long-term care combination. That's if you're under 60. Yeah, okay. and in good health, depending yeah. on your, that's mm -hmm. yeah. So we basically are just gonna take money that invest, it's not really doing it, she doesn't need it, right? And we're gonna give it a lot more purpose in her plan. And we're, the biggest purpose is we're covering that huge risk. So, so you're care. saying you're taking hundred thousand dollars to invest? Yeah. In what you're saying is over the over the years it might come to you paid out that much. Is that what you're saying? No. For her, it can vary depending on it. Say it's fifty thousand or twenty five thousand. You're taking that lump sum and you're investing it into this product. Oh. Okay. I need for long term. It's annuity long. long it's an annuity term. with a long term care where they pay all rider. It's like an enhanced benefit. So instead of having money that, yeah, it's invested, so it's working for you, but let's make it work for you even better. <laughs> let's give it a lot more purposes in your plan and help really cover that risk. And what's nice about the annuity is if you never need long-term care, it's still your money. You can annuitize it. You can take the money out. Right? It's still there for you. Nice. So say you need the money. And you're not long-term care yet. Well, okay, I can I can just take that money out and live on it. Same thing with the life policy. She can take that money out at any point and use that money to live on. So what is the the, the other one? Is life? It's a life policy with a long-term care rider. But so that's only if you're under sixty years old. Yeah. So what we do is we run it. We'll look at both and see which one's going to give you the most benefit. For Georgette, the life policy is going to give her 4000 more a month than the annuity. But I had another woman in her early 60s, and the annuity was going to be better for her. So it really depends on... So there's the annuity and the what else? It's a life insurance policy. Okay. So life insurance policy, she, she could take that money out. If she doesn't, there's always a guarantee you're going to die. <laughs> so somebody can have that money. If you didn't need that money to live on, if you didn't need it for a nurse. So those are some options that I found out over the last year that have been really helpful in plans to build, to fill in for that big gap in a lot of plans. For the big risk. Mm -hmm. The big risk, yeah. So that's something that we can go over in your hot seats or during our one-on-one -on -one sessions and stuff. Okay. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to take a quick bathroom break <laughs> and stuff. All right, so we'll come back in like three minutes, two minutes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then you guys can all think of what question you want to do. Okay, everybody has to take a care. <laughs> take care of the bathroom. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
because your is your brother in in the business with you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And your mother's name was I forgot. I'm Alex. Al Ali. Alex. Or oh, Alex. Yeah. Alexandra. No, they thought she was gonna be a boy. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. It's really Alix. 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 A L. French. Alix. Oh really? Like yeah. L L A L I S E or something. It's just A L I X, but my grandma's like, yeah, we probably should have spelled it differently. Because <laughs> everyone just called her Alex. Because right? you know, when 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 I you know I just. Mm -hmm. We know for next week, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, said, I, I know I will do those <laughs> things. And so, so do you mostly do women in your brother does anybody or you handle anybody as far as the financial advisor is concerned? I say most of my clients, it's like 70% women or it's a couple, but the woman is kind mm -hmm. of leading it, mm -hmm. the search for the advisor or getting the money in order and stuff. But mm -hmm. I do have single men clients. And stuff, but I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So he's moving out. Happy for him, but that's good. My husband wants to pay for this and this and this. And this. Um, you know. Rosemary is celebrating. Her son is moving out in August. Awesome. Anybody else have anything to celebrate? Chris, what do you have to celebrate? Oh. I'm about to have a driver next week. <gasps> <laughs> Her daughter's going to get a driver's license nice. next week. No, and the lessons. We're oh, starting lessons. with oh, lessons. We're at oh, square goodness. one. Okay. And, <laughs> and my baby's a teenager as of last week. Exciting slash terrifying. <laughs> yeah. 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 Lots of milestones right now. We just celebrated the confirmation. Yeah, All kinds of things. Three. Yeah. It's freeing for them and no for you. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, when she can start picking up her, her little sister for me, that'll be nice. <laughs> yeah, think of how much extra work you can get done. <laughs> oh my gosh. The hours I spend on the highway for them. Ugh. Yeah, sure. Dawn, do you have anything to celebrate? Um, uh, my business is after we just launched in uh, January 29th and it's uh, paying for it, covering its own expenses. So that's good. That's Yay! huge, Don. Yeah. yeah, so that, that is good. Business in January and it's paying for itself already. Yay. Yeah, because one of her goals is to make it a passive income. Right? Yeah. Right? Well, right yeah, because we, when did we speak last, Don? We spoke in... April, maybe? I think two. I think two months ago because we. I had to postpone, and then this month, you know, with uh, Boop's mom passing, mm -hmm. I had to postpone again. But yeah, I, I've done the numbers. I'm. I'm still working out the final details of it. But you know, I'm. I'm putting all the expenses under what the income is bringing in for the rentals, and it's. And and so far this month and May, May and June. Uh, has covered itself and it looks like July will be the same. Oh, that's huge. That is huge. Yeah. Great job, Don. Thanks. Businesses just don't cover till November. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, if you can right? start to break even yeah. after a year, it's yeah. big. What about you, George? Yeah, I think the average is like two years from what somebody else was telling me, but. That's a good number to know. Yeah. Awesome. What about you, Georgette? Are you celebrating anything? Not yet. Still Not looking yet. for that ever elusive job. So once I get that, I'll be able to celebrate. Okay, good. Ever elusive good. job. Oh. Yeah, she got. Was that in the fall? Um, yeah. December thirty first was my last day. So okay. ended last year. Yeah, Georgia's been in a situation where she gets a great job, the company gets bought. She gets a great job, the oh, company no gets bought. Really? The last two, yeah, but. It's all about timing, right? And being very attached so to what our expectations are for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Being attached. Good. Okay. So who wants to go first with our hot seats? We'll set aside about, we'll do eight minutes. What was the question? Any question you want. Oh, oh God. We'll do eight minutes. Anybody have? I'm okay with going first. Go first, Georgette? Okay. Yeah. I, I, I do have more. a question for you. All right. What? <laughs> what is your question? Okay, um, with with us talking about you know long term care, whether it's you know insurance and, and which direction to go in, 
Um, a couple of people, like you had said, you get a lot of advice from a lot of people. Um, when long-term care um, insurance first came out, it, yeah. everybody was running to get it. And then many of the companies actually went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So they weren't there. So the options that we're looking at, um, are, is there a fear that they may not be there and return the same amount of money that we're looking at and talking about today? Great question. So what happened with long-term care insurance is, was a very new product and what happened was the demand for the actual benefits meaning the people who bought the insurance actually needed the insurance so now they're in a nursing home facility and the insurance companies are paying out so much more in benefits than they calculated for when they priced them so they priced them way too low and people are taking out way too much a lot more than they thought okay what they kept applying to the states about was, well, we mispriced these and we need to raise our premium. So that's the one thing with the traditional long-term care policies is they can raise your premiums at any and any point. And guaranteed every year where you were raised. Yes. So they can raise your premiums. <clears throat> or they'll give you an option, we'll water down your benefits. So instead of getting 300 a day, you'll get 200 a day. Or instead of having a 3% inflation rider, we can get rid of the inflation rider completely. And I see people, like we, my dad sold these contracts because we had no, there was no way to know that it was gonna completely change down the road, but we, they get these letters from the insurance companies, okay, your premium's going up 10% this year because, now they can't pinpoint your own policy, Georgette. They're gonna apply to the state for everybody in that rating class that they gave them to. Okay. So they can raise your premiums or water them down. Now there are almost every insurance company used to get sell these. Now I think it's down to like three or four companies. Now, there's, those insurance companies are still on the hook to pay out the premiums for the policies that they sold years ago. They're just not issuing new policies. Okay? So they're very hard to get nowadays. The underwriting is extremely, extremely strict. So we have people who couldn't get a traditional policy because of their health, but were able to get that life insurance with a long-term care rider. We're able to qualify for that. So there's a big difference between how health ratings for these versus the life insurance. Okay. What usually happens, Georgette, is the two companies that we were looking at are, they've been around for years and years and years. They're very high quality. We wouldn't be able to use them if, like Raymond James does your due diligence first and they make sure that they are a premium company, whether it's AAA rated, AA rated, otherwise we can't use them. Okay. So Raymond James wouldn't allow us to sell something if they weren't sure about the company's future and finances and stuff. If for some reason they wanted to get out of the insurance company or they wanted to, what's happened before is say MetLife wants to get out of long-term care thing, they'll sell that book to another insurance company, right? Or they'll spin off that piece and another company will buy them and take care of that book for them. Okay. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that was, that was a big thing, because like you said, you know, you get the, the recommendations or the opinions of everybody out there, which you yeah. won't hear, um, because it's kind of helping to put voice to your own concerns, and, and you know, it's, it's a new realm for me, so. Yeah. So yeah, you, we, and that's what part of, our search process is to make sure it's a good rating company, right? It, it has good finances, right? It doesn't have on a lot of debt or a lot of liability with it. It's just like picking a stock to invest in. And then when you're looking for an insurance policy, you want to find, you want to find a good company. Is my F going on there? Um, but that is a good question because this land, this has completely changed over the last, even since I started the business nine years ago. And years ago till today, it's completely different. 
I right. see one woman, and unfortunately, well, she, fortunately, she got long-term care insurance. After she did, she got breast cancer. And she fought battle breast cancer for several years. And they can't deny her for this now because she already had the insurance and everything. But the company raised her premium. The one year is 2,300%. Oh my gosh. And she was already retired and on a fixed income and she could not afford that premium. So what we did was, well, because she has health, a previous health issue, her chances of needing long-term care are very high. So we ended up watering it down a little bit. So she wouldn't give it up completely and give up all the years she paid for it too. Right. Exactly. Right. Does that answer your question, Georgette? Do you have any it other? does. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, cool. We have a minute left, so we can restart it. Okay, who else wants to go? Who wants to go next? Everyone's going. We have plenty of time for everybody. Dawn, do you have a health question? Um, I don't actually think that I do. I think this is the first time I'm actually thinking about this stuff. Um, nothing is coming to mind at this point. I mean, besides the normal, like, I don't have kids, I don't have a partner. So um, the idea of like, making sure that I'm getting and I have an injury that I'm working on recovering from. So I'm kind of trying to focus on just um, like my goals that I wrote down are just Hold on, let me find my paper. Um, I have something for you, Don. If you don't, if you don't mind me sharing. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so Don is a she's self-employed. She has her own business, pretty freaking awesome, successful with it. And one thing that we've been talking about is how do we protect now while she's working, not necessarily retirement, but protect that her earnings. Okay. So mm -hmm. disability. Do you mind if I? Because I thought of you. I was reading a book, Don. Uh huh. And actually, I took screenshots of it because I, I have it in for our next call, but we can talk okay. a little bit about yeah. it now. <clears throat> Go for it. But a big piece is in disability insurance, right? And yeah. what does that look like? And this will, is relevant to you too, Chris, because Chris has her own business too. So our our biggest asset while we're working is what? Our wages, our ability mm -hmm. to earn an income. And Dawn, she had a health issue a few years ago and she's, luckily you seem to be a lot better, right Dawn? You're actively yeah, so, working to get better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I'm, I'm trying to avoid a second back surgery after an injury and I'm working on getting healthier through exercise and, and uh, physical uh, therapy and all of that. And it's really working. So my once chronic 24 seven pain is now uh, few and far between. Good. I know you said that you're actually working for it. So <clears throat> one thing we're looking at is disability insurance for her, but it does, it is expensive. insurance, and stuff. So Especially when there's a pre-existing back injury. Yeah. So part of what we're working towards is in our budget, working up the amount so that she can afford it. And another piece to you, Don, is to make sure that while you don't have coverage is that what we're doing is we're enhancing your savings as much as we can. So if you do need to leave work because of it, you won't feel terrified of covering your expenses. Right. Without, without having that income come in. Right. Uh, oh, one thing, because I know this because I have my own disability insurance. So if you work for a company and they pay your disability, right? You, that's part of your employee benefit is disability insurance. If you leave and you become disabled and you start to collect your benefit, that benefit is taxable to you, okay? So if your company pays a premium, your benefit is taxable. But for me, I pay my own premium, that benefit is tax-free. Okay, that's a big swing. We had a person come in and he was on disability benefits paying 10,000 a month. 10,000 a month net of taxes is a lot different than 10,000 a month gross of taxes. 
but for some reason he worked for a company he decided to he decided to opt it to pay for his own benefits and it really paid off for him because he had Parkinson's he had Parkinson's for about what was it over five years over five years he was collecting 10,000 a month tax rate that's a big difference so from, that's one from, thing from disability mm -hmm. so it's one thing to remember Don mm -hmm. if you pay the premium which would be the case those benefits are tax-free okay when you collect them now what I wanted to read to you <clears throat> there's another one now Social Security will cover you if you are disabled okay it's a five month waiting period I've seen people wait two years to collect from the Social Security disability okay they pay what they owe you back they do okay yeah they do pay you back but how when you think about that if you're two years, two years without wages yeah. how are you paying you your, your bills don't stop too right right yeah so Social Security disability so FSDI they'll cover 21% to 44% oh no sorry wrong screenshot was it unfair with me here we go Okay, so they'll cover between 26 and 60% of your benefit, of your income. Long-term disability? Yes, long-term. Mm -hmm. And what does Social Security consider long-term? Long you mean forever? Well, it's a five-month waiting period. Okay. So you have to be disabled for longer than five months mm -hmm. okay, for them to cover it. So did you hear that, Don? Yeah. Social Security will cover 26 to 61% of benefit but there's a five month waiting period after you apply. And only around 51% of claims are approved. Only half of them are approved? Mm -hmm. It's very, very hard. And you bet your butt that they're gonna check up on you. Well, of course. <laughs> they, they're the ones that are sitting in the car yeah. making sure. Yeah. My father-in-law's best friend has Parkinson's. He's like every, almost every day, they are outside his door to see how much he's moving. So she's like, I have Parkinson's, I have doctor's notes, it's not gonna get better. Right. It's only gonna get worse, yet they're still checking up to make sure you really are disabled. They're really like they have a call sign stuff every day? Not every day, but they'll check in probably once a week. Wow. See. Yeah. Which isn't a fun way to live either. No. <laughs> Knowing like somebody's out there. Like they could yeah. use that money towards giving us the benefits. <laughs> like instead of having a detective. Yeah. Uh, I guess you cannot really count on that. No, you can't. Right, so they'll no, pay. Because you have to be 50%. close to that, I think. But people do, I know people who cheat a lot and they are somehow, I don't think anybody is checking because I don't know anybody they are the same know, since 45 and they still do that. Yeah. So this is like the worst case thing to bet on. So what this tells me is, hey, Don, if we don't proceed with your own disability, we need to make sure that we have at least half of your income saved up for an extended period of time mm -hmm. to cover if something were to happen with your health, right? Absolutely. And another right. great reason of why you have the Braveheart Center, the more we can get that for passive income, the more we can get that income up where you don't need to be there, you don't have your sweat equity in it, your Which time. Right. Is. She Her business is the Braveheart Center. Oh, okay. The one that she just is, is Breaking even, covering its expenses. It's, uh -huh. it's what's what center? Braveheart. Braveheart. Yeah, oh, well, it's, it's a women's wellness center in Red Bank. Nice. It's really cool. Nice. Yes. Cool. It's a very very awesome place. Um, but that is a great way to have income where if you're disabled, that income's still coming in. Right. You can have somebody to help manage it, like your sister. Right. So that's another way to help manage this risk. Yeah. And the other thing, as we round this up, so what do you guys think is the largest reason for long-term disability claims? I would imagine Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's? Well, this is disability while working, so not um, for nursing home. Falls. I say slip and falls, accidents. Accidents? Um, so, um, is it very specific, like, Back injury, or or is it like yeah? Oh my god. Mm -hmm. So muscular skeletal disorders. Mm. 
and back issues are 29% of claims. Cancer wow. is the second largest, and that's 15% of pain. Oh, so I was right. It was back. Mm -hmm. okay. Back and muscular skeletal issues. Yeah. And muscle tendon, tendon issues. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's long term, huh? Mm -hmm. And this is another interesting statistic. In the 1940s, only 1% 1 of the population was the beneficiary of Social Security, the retirement benefit. Only 1%. In 2017, it was about 20%. So you can see how that much the trends have changed over the years. Sorry, that was a little fast. But I see these things, I'm like, wow. Okay, all right, thanks, Dawn, for sh let me share that with everybody. Yeah, no worries. Oh, it doesn't cover expenses. No, they will pay out 60 to 66% of your income because they want you in a little bit of pain. They want to give you an incentive to get back to work. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, so you're saying, this is just. That's why I thought long-term disability could be long-term forever. A lot of them. A half an hour and then I'm done. A certain number of years. Uh -huh. Some of them will be until you're 65 or until you hit Social Security age. They'll pay for. My friend has multiple sclerosis. Oh, so that's long-term disability. Yeah. Yeah. So she'll be on that until she hits her Social Security benefit. Or my aunt, she got cancer at, how old was she? 62. Right. And her employee benefit, disability benefit would pay until, what was it, for five years until she hit 65, the later of those. So she got it for five years and then went to Social Security. For me, I bought it. I paid extra, but I wanted it until I'm 65, even though I'm young. Like, I don't want to be burdened on my parents. I don't my husband have to worry about that the entire time, too. Well, yeah, so you're talking about still long term, long -term disability. Long -term so I got, I got something. I got, when the whole thing shifted with the hospital, I, I did like a, I know they have the long term disability that they, you know, it's a big business that has yeah. it. But I got one that would cover, I guess, I guess it's like, We'll have to talk about it later, but yeah, I thought it was even like an FLAC. Oh, FLAC will pay you well, cash if you in have other words, short term. It's, kind of, it's like a disability thing where I like very short term disability, and they'll pay you cash. Yeah, that one. Yeah, I think I got something like that, but it's only like ten dollars, twenty dollars a, a month. So I figured it's got to be better than not getting it. But we'll talk. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to see what the benefit amount is. Okay. Chris, do you want to go? Yeah. Um, cool got my wheels spinning on this disability insurance because I had it once upon a time in my yeah. teacher's life. And yeah. the reason my peers influenced me to look at it was because the particular policy I purchased um, allowed for maternity leave benefits. Mm, yep. And a lot of my so um, I hadn't thought about it since then. Um, Shops closed, no babies, but you know, other, other, you know, I have a checklist to talk about, <laughs> so this is good. Yeah, um, I'm just curious, and this could be so peripheral, but um, when I when I bought my last policy, it was taken out of my paycheck pre tax. Mm -hmm. Is there a way of doing that now that I pay me? It won't, but. Then if you need the benefit, it comes out tax free. Okay. All right. All right. So I have to buy it outright from my earnings, my take home, but then the premium payouts won't be taxed. Yes. Okay. And it's usually it's I would recommend it that way. Okay. All right. You and just got my wheels my spinning head. all over. It's something it just it didn't occur to me, but it did because my back seized up, you know, and I started to think to myself, hmm, I don't have another one of me in the house, in my <laughs> office to yeah. do this project. <laughs> and that's really think what think about, Chris, because you yeah. just started your own business. Yeah. It's to make yeah. sure we get one that you can increase the amount based on your income. Right. So they'll look at it each year. Your income was X amount. Now, 20,000 now is 50,000. 
you qualify mm -hmm. for a jump in your what your benefits would be mm -hmm. because sometimes we'll get a policy early on and it's a fraction of what we are making now sure and our life sure. sales based on this amount but our benefits are going to be based on this amount right so something is um where you can increase the benefit right and that being said um is there a waiting period when I'm purchasing my own disability insurance or does it depend on the policy or was that just a government red tape thing? That was for the government for you. The social security. You can plan, you can, I think it's that government. You can do a 90 day, yeah. you can do a six month, you can do a Okay. Year. So that's determined when I make my purchase. So they call that the elimination period. I mean, if you're working, if Okay. So you um, through the cost during the elimination period. Mm -hmm. And if you do a longer elimination period, it means that you're going to save money on your premium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we have enough savings. Okay. I have enough savings to cover three months of my expenses. Well, that's mm -hmm. a three months elimination period. Mm -hmm. If I have plenty in the bank, I'm going to do a year's worth. I have a year's worth of savings. I'll do a year elimination period. Okay. Yeah. All right. And this is actually the same thing with like the traditional long-term care policies too. Like, oh, I have enough to cover a year in a nursing home. So I'm going to do a year elimination period and then my benefits will kick in mm -hmm. like three months or six months. But this is okay. something that can help with the, the cost of it. Good. And then one more question. Um, and I'm sure this can vary from person to person. But at what age, because uh, I'm looking at retirement age is 20 years for me, or 19, technically. Um, how soon am I thinking about a long-term care policy or a rider on? Uh, <laughs> you know, at what age or stage yeah. am I, are we talking about? Not until you're in your late 50s. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This disability would be the one for you right now. Right. Right. And then when you get to, it's really kind of, when you get to the point where your assets are more than the wages you would make in your remaining years of working, that's when we're gonna start some protecting our income, our wages, mm -hmm. to protecting our assets with long-term care. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if you Just have- say it one more time, repeat that. If you make $100,000 a year, mm -hmm. and you are five years to retirement. Mm -hmm. So that's 500,000 of potential income coming in. But now you have a million dollars saved up. But that million dollars is worth more to you than that 500000 of income wages. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's the point where we're going to start shifting from protecting our income with disability to protecting our assets. With assets. Income. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Yeah, definitely. You're still in yes. your early years. Yeah. 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 You have to see I love it. I love this now. Yeah. Good place to be. Okay. <laughs> So this is something I'll make a note to draw up for you, Chris. Thank you. So I have a very rare, um, actually, I'm not going to show this with you guys. I have a new client, and he made a ton of money the first year of his business. And the wife's like, we need to get disability insurance right away because there's no way anybody else could do what he's doing. She couldn't take over his rights as his own business. Right, right. And it's scary, when it, especially when it's your own business, right? It's not mm -hmm. like you're an employee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're in charge of your income. You're in charge of your health then too. Right. You're in charge of, you go driving in your car and you get into a car accident, right? That's on you to, that's a risk that we need to protect against. Okay, what we do with this. Okay. We have you guys left. Who wants to go first? Well, you know, I don't know what I should ask, uh, but you know, I'm still, you know, as far as as the long term, mm -hmm. I know that let's say if something happens to me, then my thought is again, since I don't owe anybody anything, then whatever I have will go to whatever yeah. I will be. But I guess I just was not prepared for thinking about it. Well, we you don't know, want to think like, about it. Yeah, we like, never think about, oh, you're going to nursing home, exactly, playing bingo. Uh, you know, where I should be or that I should already 
have some idea. You know, mm-hmm. God only knows what your life will be. The only issue is, you know, what scares me the most if you would get, you know, men- mentally, this, you know, like what is it? If you have Alzheimer's or if you have uh, dementia, like I just spoke to my friend today and it's, you know, from two months to, to today, what, what the difference in the way she's, mm-hmm. You know, uh, receiving, off. you know, re- receiving the messages, and she's yeah. totally confused. So, so that's, you know, so that's what scares me. But I guess if if I don't make any decision, then I guess the trustee would make the decision, depending on my money left at that time. Yeah. What you know, where I would go or where I can afford to go. Yeah. So what Christine has set up, what we've been working on to get set up in place is that because she doesn't have family here, right? She doesn't, her family's overseas. We need somebody to be able to take over if she can't make a decision for herself anymore. So we have the trust company, Raymond James Trust Company, become really the leader in what's going to happen with her money, her house, her bills, her care facility and stuff. You have children? No. So one thing, no one. <laughs> so. part of our step, and I know we met together with the trust <laughs> company, the, the leader in her case, and she got very overwhelmed, and it can get yeah. very overwhelming. He's like, these are all the things you need to think about. I'm like, okay, well, yeah. let's actually break it down slowly, mm-hmm. right? So the first step for you to do was we had to get clear on what your assets were. Which? Yeah. Yes, and, and you know so, and then what to transfer to? What to transfer to the trust or not trust? To the trust room before something yeah. happens to me, basically at this moment. So yeah. I didn't do anything on it. Today. No. Let's talk about. Okay, so I want to go into trust right now. This is a good segue into it. So. We're talking about long-term care and how much money it is, right? So we brought up Medicaid and Medicaid will pay for your long-term care. Medicare won't, right? Unless it's hospice care. Medicare won't unless it's going to be an improving condition. But with long-term care, the condition isn't going to be improving. Medicaid will step in and pay for it, but you have to be broke. And by broke, it's two thousand dollars to your name. Really? Two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars. That's it. That's ridiculous. So if you have three hundred thousand dollars, and you you need a nursing home, you're gonna pay out of pocket each month until that three hundred thousand is two thousand dollars. If you are married, Mm -hmm. you have a spouse. That spouse can keep about one hundred fifty thousand dollars to their name which really isn't a lot of money in the grand scheme of things, right? You can't really, you can't go very far, especially in New Jersey. I don't know where you could go very far with that money. And I actually started working with a widow after her husband passed away, who he had Alzheimer's. She was still working, but she had to stop working because his condition was so bad. He needed a nursing home. They had to spend down their assets. They had to spend down her, all of her retirement money down to 150,000. But, by the time they got on to Medicaid, it was now a hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now she he passed away and she's in her late sixties. She's like, I can't go back to work now. She's having health issues and her retirement got completely easy sabotaged because they had to spend on so much money. So what people have done is put their money into a trust. Right? People were like, okay, well, instead of spending down my money, I'll just give it away. I'll give it to my kids, I'll give it to somebody so that I sold my money, but it's not in my name, so I'll qualify for Medicaid. Make sense? But if you hire a company, does that mean the company has the trust and you still qualify for Medicare? Not really, I guess. No, yeah, no. I'll get into that. Oh. Yeah. So oh, Medicaid yeah. now has a five-year look-back period. Okay. So that they increased, yeah. Five years, yeah, it went from three years to five Medicare, years. Five years. Medi- Medicaid. Medicaid. Medicaid, five years. Okay. So, Rosemary, if you give me money uh-huh. and you try to qualify for Medicaid, they're going to look back over five years to see how much money you gifted me. 
But if you did, and but if it's more than five years, then they don't look. They don't. Look, yeah. So let's. That's within the five years. But you see, like, yeah, if, if if somebody could predict, if I if I give you the money today, and I hope that you know I'm still alive and okay for five years, I don't yeah. I don't need the money. But mm -hmm. what if something happens in between? You. Yeah. So actually, I think I don't know my my sister's in law. They. Over five years ago, they did, they, they, oh, power of attorney. Mm -hmm. They did power of attorney to her son. Okay. That's, that doesn't do anything with the assets. It doesn't do no. anything. Okay. Because, yeah. no, they're, they're investigating and now she has no money because they took everything. Yeah. So Medicaid's going to act, if you gift to me 300000 they're going to act like you sell that 300000 really? They're going to make you pay until you hit that 300000 mark. Under five years. Mm -hmm. Within five years. But over five years, you're safe. So when we go back to those workbooks, that can be one of your action plans and to yeah. when you're in your 70s, okay, now might be the time to start transferring things out of your name to protect it for you, say you have your son, kids, so that there's still money there for your legacy or really for your spouse too, to live on, to protect against, okay? Now we wanna do it smart though. <laughs> you're not just gonna give your kid your house and say, Please don't sell this for out from under me. Or please don't get divorced and you lose half of the house in your divorce. Right? Or they get into a car accident and they get sued and your house goes bye-bye. We want to do a smart, which is where trust comes into play. Now there are two different types of trust when this comes into play. We have revocable and irrevocable. Okay. Revocable means I can change my mind at any point. This is a trust that you have. You can put an asset in and take it out, in and out, okay? So this is why for Christine, the reason she set this up is more because having the trust company be able to manage her stuff if she can't, mentally. Get her bills paid, um, take care of her house, sell the house for her, get her into a, a nursing home. So for that, we started talking about, you know, what assets should she start putting mm -hmm. into the trust to make it easier if, say, all of a sudden mentally she can't make those decisions anymore? You guys okay if I spend a little bit more time on this? Yes. Okay, good. So an easy thing to put into an a revocable trust, right, that can change my mind, is your house. Right? Not much to do with the house, right? You put it in the trust. It's very easy. You cannot, you can never, ever, ever put retirement accounts into a trust. <laughs> cannot <laughs> okay because you'd have to take it out of that retirement structure that tax structure pay all the taxes on that money and then put it into a trust it's really not an efficient way to use your money okay you can put your house you can put just a basic investment account a non-retirement account you can put a savings account right all those type of stuff in it you don't have to do it all at once like Christine, we were talking about, okay, let's mm -hmm. pick something and we'll slowly mm -hmm. start doing it. And the good thing is, it's revocable. You can change your mind. You you get, if you put an investment account into a revocable trust and it earns, it has gains in it that you have to pay taxes on, you just pay, if that gets added to your own income tax return, right? If you're not filing a new tax return. So the reason for a revocable trust is really ease of management for your money if you can't make a decision. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You can see how that could be helpful. And you can name a trust company as trustee. You can name a child as trustee. You can name a trust company and your child, which I recommend because the trust company is going to be kind of the overseer. They do this day in, day out. Is all they do. They're going to know exactly what needs to be done with the trust instead of your, your child trying to figure it all out themselves. Like I would much, much, much rather have my parents have a trust company managing it and then I might just be the person that in between to help my parents out. I don't want to have to deal with that day in day out. That's like its own business. Now an irrevocable trust means I put money in and I can't take it back out. I, I'll name a trustee. So let's say fast forward 
30 years and now my daughter's older, she can be my trustee. And if I need money, I say, Andy, I need money. Hopefully she, we have a good relationship at that point. And she'll be the go between and get, take the money out of it for me. Okay. The reason people do irrevocable is for the long-term care. Long-term? Yeah, because this way it gets the asset out of your name. It files its own tax return. So you're saying if you, no tax return. If you it make files. your daughter the trustee, yes, and your, in your irre, ir, 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 look, irrevocable account, mm -hmm. she cannot touch the money. There would be guidelines, and it's like, okay, Andy, I need money for healthcare costs. That'd be a reason for it to take money out of the trust from the from the yeah. irrevocable. Yeah, so she's kind of the go-between. I need money, I go to Andy. Andy then goes to who's ever managing my money and takes the money out. So the trust itself has its own tax return with the irrevocable. It's like its own identity now, right? So you have to pay taxes? Yeah. Yeah, you still have to pay taxes. We always have to pay taxes. <laughs> um, okay. But it gets the assets out of our name. So... When we think about the stages of retirement, when people come up to that relaxation stage, right, they're in their 70s, maybe early 80s, their health is so good. They're like, okay, let's start being proactive and seeing, can we, even if we have money to pay for long-term care, even if we have an insurance policy to help pay for it, what if we just put our house into an irrevocable trust so we know if anything, the kids are going to get the house. Or if anything, there's going to be a legacy that goes to somebody. Okay. So that is some conversations. <coughs> I wouldn't do that now. right? I wouldn't recommend, Chris, you're younger. I wouldn't recommend you putting the house in an irrevocable trust. We have plenty of time to plan for it. But it's just understand what are the strategies and when do we start implementing them. Right? We've got to think of how we're being proactive and we know, okay. All right, we hit 70, let's put the house in the trust. <laughs> we hit 75, let's put another thing of assets in the trust. Right? So all along, we are mitigating that risk. We're protected, protecting against it, managing that risk of long-term care. Okay? This is, I know this is a lot. Does this make sense? The idea behind it, right? And we can talk one-on-one -on -one how it applies to everybody. We have one more hot seat, Rosemary. Do you want to go? Okay, so <clears throat> that was that's one of my biggest concerns. Two of my biggest concerns are number one, how do I do all and any of this when I'm paycheck to paycheck? And how does it fit in? Like it's like right, the dog this and that, you know, the car, it's just not stop. Yeah. But so but you answered my other biggest concern. Okay, so that's good. What was that concern? Well, <laughs> I wanted to make sure that no matter what, you know, that Eric could at least have a house. When, okay. When, when one of us, when either one of us, anything happened. Like, he's moving out, but, you know, like, and we're going to be You want around. some sort of legacy to yeah, like I, we're going to be around at least till 90, but okay. 115 is my age. That I'm going to be. <laughs> they, they, but they are working on the medication. But he's, you know, like that at least when the two of us are gone, at least you'd have a home over his head. And so you're saying that we put the house in that mm -hmm. one. But, but my question is, when you said that Medicaid could look back five years from now, and we're, all, we're already 62, closing in on 65, I'm thinking like I need to do that now. Mm -mm. You still you, you still have time. Okay. So when you talk about wanting to get all these things in place. So let me let me clarify that. So what you're saying is I'm 62, my husband's 63. So we don't have to do it right now. We could wait five years and do it like 68, 70, when yeah. we actually do mm -hmm. go into the retirement phase. And um we're still going to be okay because even if something 
happens just to Charlie, I'm still there and it'll be okay. I can still do any of this. Yeah, I would say once you get past 65, or yeah. once you get yeah. past that, once you get retirement, it's like, okay, we're going to have a conversation about this. You bring your son in. We want to make sure at least you have the house that we're living in. But okay. what happened if, in the meantime, God forbid, you go to nursing home? Then right. you said if they look five years yeah. back. Yeah, yeah I mean, if you, you want to be that conservative with it, yeah, we can do it right away. We can do it right now. But I'm thinking of the scenario that you said the woman who something happened to her husband and then she couldn't work and she was taking care of like all these things like in my mind that was gonna happen. And I'm like, oh, maybe yeah. I should just do this now with the house, you know? Because yeah. Well, we're meeting next week. Yeah. So this is definitely a hot topic we can talk about. Okay. And what I would say is, it's always going to come back to what are our priorities? What are going to be our top priorities? When, especially if things, because this is going to cost some money because we're going to have to meet with an estate attorney. We're going to have to get a will set up, mm. all that type of stuff. Christine went through that. So what are going to be our priorities? And it's not, we can always find money. There's always, there's always a way to find money for a priority. <laughs> there's always a way to find money for a priority. You yeah. mean like even when you're paycheck to paycheck? Yes. Okay. There's always some sort of wiggle room. And always it's a way to manage your priorities. To, yeah, to make sure, yeah, we talk to about find money for mm -hmm. Yep. So if this is the, the top on your list of priorities, well, then we're going to have to find a way to budget it into what you currently are doing with your money. Okay. Just like for Dawn, we we're talking about the disability and stuff, right? That's something that we're going to work towards so that she can add that into her budget. Okay. A lot of times, like, oh, all of a sudden I have a few thousand dollar expense. How, where's this coming from? <laughs> it's like, so sometimes we can't just do it right away. We need to work towards it, which is fine. Anything that's worth having, we're going to work towards. So for you and Charlie, I would have you both think about, you know, what are going to be our retirement priorities? Is it to make sure that our son has something, some sort of legacy? I think one of the priorities right now is to do that uh, paid mortgage every two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get the house paid off. Because that's another piece to leaving the house your son is having it paid, paid off. off. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so that he doesn't inherit the mortgage with it. You know, we tried doing that, mm -hmm. and the company wouldn't let us do it. Okay, so there's a way I've You'll run into that. that. Yeah, okay. so we just have to pick a time where we'll pay double that month. Because we'll buy weekly payments, so it just gets an extra mortgage payment each year. So again, we'll just wiggle that into, we'll find a way to make that into our budget. I have another woman, Ashley, who's part of our club. She's not here tonight. But her her mortgage company was the same thing. Right. Okay, cool. Does that cover your question? Yeah, thank you. Pardon? Okay, good. We have a few minutes. Anybody have any last questions? Was Has this been helpful? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Was, it, was it too much information? <laughs> well, I'm thinking, no, it was good. Yeah. I'll come over here. I did have a question about there seems to be so much wisdom here <laughs> that I wanted to believe it. Like but, but of course, like I'm having a brain fart. I, don't, I can't think of it right now. But you guys talk and maybe it'll come back to me. <laughs> oh my gosh. My big opportunity. Oh, this wisdom. Okay, I'll think of it. I'll think it's, of it. it's a lot. You know, it's a lot. Of things, yeah. yeah, I didn't do anything about my my trust because it's I, I have to do some thinking and yeah, you know like you know, but it's yeah it's like uh, yeah. So a lot of this but, is we start we're like building your plans out right, and then afterwards we can work on executing that plan and impl implementing that plan. Because we don't implement it once. <laughs> like we saw each stage, you're going to be implementing different things. Different hurdles are going to come up and stuff. And the benefit of working with me when I just focus on you know, women going through retirement is I know the hurdles that you're going to hit before you hit them. <laughs> and that's part of why we look at how do we manage these risks and protect against them. Because my dad's had 35, 36, 37 years of experience. I've had nine. My brother... We've seen a lot. <laughs> we know what people encounter. And yeah, everyone's a little different. Every situation's different, but it's a lot of the same 
same roadblocks, same gaps in people's plans that we see. So, you know, I just, I don't have that fear. And when I mentioned that, that is not a fear of mine because I have so much hope just from meeting Jessica. Oh. Like, I'm serious. <laughs> like your answer prayer. And I don't, you know, it's just like, you know, did you hear it? And you want to do everything now or yeah. like yesterday, you know, and, but it's like, no, one step at a time. And, you know, you cannot make certain decisions until you're actually, you know, the years go by and different things change. And you know what I mean? Depending yeah. On, you need to think about things. Yeah. But not having to make a definite decision until that time comes. Like, I think the most important thing is I see women who they feel very trapped in their situation or trapped by their money, trapped at their job. Mm -hmm. And the way to prevent that is to always know what are our choices, what are our options, what are the ways to get past it. And stuff. So that's what I always encourage you guys to, whenever you feel like you can't breathe, take a breath and remember, I have choices. What are those choices right away, right? <laughs> Thank you guys for participating virtually. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks, Jess. And the recording.